Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Masks Off. And this is Kim with you. And I'm happy to have you here with me today. And I'm going to talk about perfectionism today. And I wonder if many of you can relate. But before I jump into the topic, let me start with the quote, because the quote is very juicy. So the quote is, perfectionism is a 20 ton shield that we lug around thinking it will protect us when in fact it's the thing that's really preventing us from taking flight if we want to overcome perfectionism we need to let go of the heavy weight that holds us down so i really like this quote And I was thinking this morning that I wanted to talk about this topic because when I woke up, I was having a really hard time getting myself going and motivated because I was in this overwhelm. I felt so much overwhelmed and I felt the overwhelm because I'm launching this new business and I have such a long, long, long laundry list of things that I have to do to get the business off the ground and then ongoing things that I need to do in order to get clients and have podcasts and have guests and then upload and on and on and on. And I woke up and I just looked at this long, long list. And because I felt so overwhelmed, I felt immobilized. So because of the work that I've done and the process that I used to work through, I knew that what I was feeling was, it was in part the present moment because I do have all these things going on, but I also knew that there was something else that was at play. There was an underlying layer of something that was fueling the way that I was feeling. And often when we're stuck and we can't move forward, as the quote says, if we want to overcome perfectionism, we need to let go of the heavy weight that holds us down. So when we feel stuck, it is often a pattern or energy that is stuck within us from the past. So I said, okay, well, let me explore. Let me go through my process. Let me go through my power, my power process that I use with clients and let me see what's going on because it was not new to me, this feeling of overwhelm and that I have to like do all of it, do everything perfectly all the time, this internal pressure that I was building and creating inside of me was not a new feeling. It was one that I've had for a very, very long time. And what I quickly came to was a time in my life back when I was in high school. It was actually ninth grade. It was my first year of high school. And I may have shared this before in another podcast, but I think it is a good example to repeat here, right? We can always hear stories more than once. So when I entered high school, ninth grade, I remember trying out for soccer for the soccer team. I'd never played soccer before. So that was an FFT. What's an FFT? Brene Brown calls it a first fucking time of doing something. So playing soccer was an FFT. That was enough pressure in and of itself because I had never played before. I was comparing myself to other players that had been playing for a long time. So I was trying really hard to do well and putting 
an unrealistic expectation on myself to be as good as them when I had never like really touched a soccer ball before. So I was doing that. I joined the marching band, which was three nights a week. I had never been in a marching band before. I did not know how to march. <laughs> to this day, I still tell the story that when we did competitions and shows, I could not figure out how to march in cadence and play the flute at the same time. So I never played my flute. I faked it. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm calling myself out because I figured, well, people can see if my feet are moving with everybody else or not. So they would notice if I couldn't march, but they may not necessarily hear me if I'm playing the notes or not. So I'm like, okay, at least let me make sure that people can see that I'm in sync. So I, I did that. So that was new. That was the second FFT. And then on top of it, just managing a new school, a big school and having a heavy workload. I was taking honor classes and so I had tons of homework. I would go to school all day long, go to soccer practice right after school, and then three nights a week, go to marching band practice and then still do the homework. I can remember at times just coming home and collapsing on the kitchen floor and breaking down in tears because I was trying so hard to hold it all together and to do everything perfectly. And here's, here's the part about the perfectionist that's really difficult. And this is where so much suffering comes in is that the perfectionist, AKA me, will often operate in all or nothing, black or white thinking. And it's more of a, there's more of a, a fixed mindset rather than a growth mindset, which translated for me that when I was doing all of these new things, I was expected to do everything perfectly like that without even a learning curve, without a growth curve. I was just put this pressure on myself and no one was telling me that you have to be a straight A student. No one was telling me that I had to join the marching band. No one told me that I had to play soccer and then try to be the best at soccer when I had never played before. So all this internal pressure I was creating within myself. Why did I create this internal pressure? Why did I wear the perfection mask? And I've shared this story before, which is that I learned that by wearing the perfection mask and by being perfect, that it was a protective mechanism. It was a way to protect my inner self, my inner child, because I had a messaging that, and no one directly said it to me. It's a messaging that I learned, picked up on, that if I wanted to be seen and I wanted to be validated, AKA <clears throat> feel like I was good enough, feel like I was lovable and worthy, then I needed to perfect and perform. So <clears throat> I have all this internal pressure that I'm creating for myself because I'm just trying to be seen and validated and feel like I am worthy. Here is the problem. <clears throat> As the quote says, I'm sorry <clears throat> for clearing my throat. Perfectionism is a 20 ton shield that we lug around thinking it will protect us, thinking it will protect us. And it does feel like a 20 ton shield. That pressure of having to perform and perfect and please and carry that around is, is heavy. 
And if we're not aware of the pattern and we don't have skills to know what to do with that energy, there is going to be a great deal of suffering that comes along with that. And, and that was the case for me. It manifested for me in having an autoimmune disease. Now that may not be, let me say and pause side note that that's not most likely the sole reason why I developed an autoimmune disease. There is a genetic component as well, where there's autoimmune in my family. So there, I had a predisposition. And then when I was pregnant, the pregnancy triggered the autoimmune disease. But I also believe that having all of this internal turmoil added to that it create because it created more inflammation in my body as a result of all the cortisol and stress that I was putting on myself and that I was carrying around created all that inflammation, which just made it ripe and a perfect storm for me to develop an autoimmune disease. And our bodies will let us know when it's too much. When we, when our bodies can't handle all of this pressure, it will let us know. And if you are curious about learning more about that, I feel like one of the best people, not one of the best, but a really good person to read is Gabor Mate's The Body Keeps the Score. And so I believe that the quote, again, saying perfection, perfectionism is a 20 ton shield that we think will protect us. It will not protect us. It will hurt us and create more suffering and more struggle for us. And it actually is preventing us from taking flight. So going back to my situation this morning when I woke up and I was feeling immobilized because I was feeling that pressure of my to-do list and all that's going on for me right now and that overwhelm, it first of all, like I said, brought me all the way back to the past. So though when it happened back when I was in ninth grade, all I did was take those feelings, that energy and emotions that I was feeling, and I pushed it down. I stuffed it down because I didn't have the tools or the skills to know what to do with all of that. I was 14. And chances are there are many examples before that. And I clearly know there were many situations in my life that followed that. It was a lifelong pattern until I learned differently until I learned the skills and the tools to handle it differently. So what did I do differently today? I used my toolbox. I knew that what I was feeling, the energy that was coming up was from the past. I also had a lot of energy going on for fear of the future. What if I don't do it? What if I can't get it done? What if, um, I fail at this. What if I'm not smart enough? And even that, those thoughts of what if in the future, things that may or may not happen that I'm fearful of, even those can then loop back to triggering patterns from the past of feeling not good enough. At the core of it for all of us, it mostly boils down to core wounding, which is I'm not good enough. I don't feel worthy of love and belonging. And what I want and desire is not available to me. So all of that was just this inner dialogue, belief systems, looping, going on and on and on. When I finally said, okay, I can't operate like this all day long. I need to heal and I need to feel and I need to do something 
with this energy. And so then I went and did a meditation and use my tools, use my skills to be able to allow and include and integrate the part of me that was from the past feeling like it's too much. I'm not good enough. I can't perfect. And just allowing that all to just be accepting the as is. And once I went through the process, then I could feel the energy shifted and the energy moved. And now I'm feeling more centered. I'm clear headed. I'm not attached to that perfectionist mindset right now. I am in the space of one thing at a time. My best is good enough. Progress, not perfection and so on. And, and what am I describing right there? What I'm describing is a middle ground, an in-between space where there's grace and there's compassion for myself. It's growth. It's not this all or nothing, black or white mentality. It's the middle ground. And there's so much more space. There's more freedom now. There's more compassion for myself. There's more love for myself. My energy is flowing more clearly. And thus, I'm going to be able to create more so throughout the day. So, and here's the thing, you know, it's possible that later on today, the thoughts might start again, the mental looping might start again, because the pattern of the perfectionist is one that started way back. So there's lots of layers of sedimentation and it just takes time. It's not like it's going to go away forever. What is different for me and that can be different for you as well is to have the toolbox, to have the skills, to know how to move it or heal it when it comes to the surface. So just think about these as blocks, like energy blocks, or think about water flowing, like a flowing river going downhill. And there's all of these big boulders and the water has to go around the boulders. And if you take that scenario and you compare it to your energy, and if your energy is flowing and you have all of these blocks, energy blocks, patterns, things from the past that are in the way, the energy has to go around those big blocks, around the boulders. And it's still flowing, but it's maybe slowed down some because it has to go around the big boulders. And some of us has some of us have huge, huge boulders. And then others may have smaller ones or medium-sized ones. And as time goes on and you do more and more work, you're clearing out some of the boulders, the blockages, the patterns and your energy starts to flow more. So that's that's the end goal, is to be able to have your energy more clean and clear flowing so that you can create love, have peace, have more joy and more creativity, more abundance. That's the end goal. And that's what I do with my program. And that's what I use every day for myself as well. So I like the quote says, if you, we want to overcome perfectionism, we need to let go of the heavy weight that holds us down. The heavy weight, AKA slash boulders. And there's a process that you can use to let go of that heavy weight. 
So I hope that you enjoyed this episode. And if you want to know more, you want to hear more about it, you want to understand more about the process, then let me know in the comments section. And I would love it if you would support me in subscribing or if you like the video to give a thumbs up and you can always um, reach out to me and I have everything in the show notes where you can reach me and find me. So I hope that you have a wonderful week and I will see you again real soon on Masks Off.